Good morning, Year 4. I hope you are all well, had a fantastic weekend and are ready for another week of reading. This is going to be our final week looking at Edward Tulane in guided reading. Um, so I'm really excited to see what happens next. Um, before we get started, I'd like to ask you a question. What happened to Edward last week? It was a rather eventful week for him. So I'd like you to just pause the video what and think what happened to Edward last week and resume the video when you have um, had a bit of a think, okay? So what were the main things that happened to Edward last week? Well, you will remember that um, the Tulane family were taking a ship to England and on their journey, Edward got thrown overboard by one of the, the nasty boys um, that were that had stolen him off Adeline and were throwing him about. So Edward fell overboard, but fortunately he was collected by uh, a fisherman named Lawrence, who has just taken him back home uh, to see his wife, Nelly. Um, so that's where we left him. Um, and we're gonna find out what happens in a little bit. But before we do, um, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, we have, as usual, eight, brand new bits of vocabulary that we are going to look at. Now they are behind me here. Um, I hope you can see those okay. So we're gonna go through those in order. So the first word starting at the top is stripping. Stripping, stripping, very good. Now stripping is a verb, which means to take off the outside layer of something. So for example, if it was um, really, really warm inside, you might strip off your coat and jumper uh, to cool yourself down. So it's to take off the outside layer of something. So for our action for that, we are going to imagine that we are stripping wallpaper. Um, so uh, to get rid of that, uh, some old wallpaper from our house. So your hands, get your arms going to be the wall and you're going to strip off a layer of the wallpaper. So stripping, stripping. Make sure you're repeating that after me. Very good. Our next word is remained, remained. Excellent stuff. So remained means to stay um, or to, to go on being. Um, so for example, um, after getting full marks in um, her spelling test, Lilla remained happy for the rest of the day. So it means staying in one place. So our action is going to be remained, remained. So as if you're staying somewhere in one set place. Um, the third word is designing. Designing, excellent job. So designing means to make plans for something or to create something. So if you've moved into a brand new house, think about what might you design once you've moved into a brand new house. You might design your bedroom, for instance. You might get to choose what color it is um, and where to, where to put things and what to buy for it. So designing. So I want you to imagine that you're designing your bedroom, maybe painting a pattern on it. So I want you to harness your inner Miss Boots, the artist of the year, um, and you're holding your paintbrush, designing. So if it's your drawing or painting something on the wall, designing. Very good. Um, our next word, horrified. Horrified, horrified, brilliant stuff. So horrified is a word that you may be uh, familiar with. Um, it is a verb which means to feel horror, frighten or shocked. Um, so for example, if you saw a monster behind you, you might feel horrified. Um, or maybe when Edward fell off uh, the boat or was thrown off the boat, he might feel horrified, uh, really scared of what's gonna happen to him next. Um, so this action is very similar to one that we did last week, actually, um, but it really sort of shows that fear. So I want you to imagine that something really scary has happened and you're feeling horrified. So grasping the side of your face as if you're really scared, horrified. So let's recap those first four words. So I'm gonna say the word and I'd like you to do the action, please. So stripping, stripping, remember peeling off, stripping that wallpaper, uh, remained, remained, staying in one place, uh, designing, designing, um, and horrified. Horrified. Very good. So let's do the second half of our words. Our next word is lacked. Lacked. 
Very good. Now, if you lack something, it means that you are without something or that you do not have something. Um, so, for instance, if you were really far into a, a, a marathon, you might lack the energy to finish it. It means you don't have enough of something uh, to finish it. Or I, I lack the eggs needed to make this cake. It means you just don't have something. Um, so if you don't have something, it means you have zero of something. So uh, I want you to make a zero with your hand and say, lacked lacked so big old zero um our next word is arrange 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 very good now arrange is a verb which means to put something in order um perhaps in terms of size pattern um shape and to position it in a certain way uh so for instance you might um arrange your toys in order of size or you may, uh, meaning that you put them into groups, or you may uh, arrange them um, by their color or what they're made of, or something like that. So our action for arrange, I want you to imagine that you've put something, perhaps your toys, in order of size, going from tallest to smallest. So our action for that is if we've arranged something in size, arrange, gradually getting smaller, arrange, almost like steps. Very good. OK, our penultimate word, our second last word is mortified, mortified. Very good. So mortified means that you feel embarrassment, really, really crippling, terrible embarrassment or shame or humiliation. So something really, really um, embarrassing has happened to you. Um, so mortified, mort comes from the uh, a word meaning to die. So it's almost so embarrassing that you could die. Um, so for instance, if uh, you forgot to put on your belt at school and your trousers fell down, in fact, that fell down, you might feel mortified, really, really shocked, embarrassed and humiliated. So I want you to imagine that that terrible thing has happened to you. Maybe your trousers have fallen down at school and you're just going to put your hands not to your side, like with horrified, but just over your face like this. So mortified, mortified as if you're hiding from the world. And our final action that we're going to look at is soothe, soothe, soothe. Very good. Now, soothe is a verb which means to calm or comfort something or somebody. Um, so, for example, if a baby uh, was screaming and you wanted to soothe them, you might soothe them by uh, perhaps stroking their head or their hair um, or singing them a lullaby. It means to calm someone down. So for soothe, I want you to imagine that you're stroking something. Our action is going to be soothe. Soothe, so you're stroking something. Very good. Now let's go through, I'm gonna do them in a random order. I'm gonna say the word. I would like you to do the action and say the word back to me. So let's start with mortified. Mortified, remember feeling extreme embarrassment, mortified. Um, horrified, let's do horrified. As if you've seen something really scary, horrified. Excellent job. Um, stripping. Stripping, remember, stripping that wallpaper off, peeling it off the wall. Excellent. Um, designing. Harnessing that inner boots. Designing, as if you're painting or drawing something on a canvas or a wall in front of you. Um, let's go for arrange. Arrange. As an example, we've arranged things by size. Arrange. Very good. Um, our next word, let's do lacked. Lacked. If you lack something, it means you have none of something. So lacks as if you've got zero of something. And let's do remained. Remained, meaning to stay in one place or to go on being. So remain, remain, you're staying right there. Now I believe, oh, and final word I should say, soothe, soothe. So remember when we might stroke something or someone just to soothe them, to calm them down. Excellent job, guys. So those are going to be the eight words that we're going to be focusing on um, today and for the rest of this week in reading. So make sure that you um, that you remember those. So let's um, before we start reading the next chapter and finding out what happens to Edward Tulane, let's first complete. Um, let me show you the activity that you guys are going to be doing, um, testing your vocab. Um, so those are the words one more time. 
So what you've got to do here is insert the correct words into the sentences. So let's read the first one here. He something the strength to climb the rope. He something the strength to climb the rope. Now, here it could be uh, two things. So it could be that he had the strength to climb the rope, but we don't really have any words there that really that fit that. Or it might be that he wasn't able to climb the rope. He doesn't have the strength. Now think about it. What word means that he wouldn't have the strength? He didn't have any. So I think the word that works best here would be lacked. So he lacked the strength to climb the rope. So meaning that he did not have it. So what I'd like you to do is to pause the video here. Can you then use those eight bits of vocabulary that we've learned and put them in the right places in these sentences? If you want to push yourself, it would be great for, as an extension, find an antonym for the word mortified and use it in a sentence. So remember, what does mortified mean? Hands over the face. So mortified means really embarrassed. And what's an antonym again? Remember, a synonym is this means uh, a word that is the same. An antonym is something that means the opposite. So think of a word that means the opposite of mortified and use it in a sentence. OK, guys, that is your task. Pause the um, pause the video now and resume when you're ready to continue. Off you go. OK, so hopefully you've had a chance to read through. Um, sorry to, to complete that activity. Let's go through some of the answers. So, as we said, he lacked the strength to climb the rope. The sight of the dead animal horrified us. After a week in the hospital, the patient remained very ill. She wanted to arrange the bottles according to size. We tried to soothe the cat, so tried to relax the cat by petting her and feeding her warm milk. She was mortified when she realized she had forgotten her homework. She began designing all the costumes for the film. And then finally, we started stripping the paint off the walls. Really excellent job there, guys. So we are going to move on to the next chapter of Edward Tulane. Hopefully you can see that in front of you. Please make sure that you're, um, that you're following on, your, um, on your, either your own sheet or on this page here. So let's start. So remember, Edward is just with the, the fisherman, uh, Lawrence, and his wife, uh, Nellie, as well. So with his new owners. And they're trying to look for clothes for him. And so Edward Tulane became Susanna. Nellie sewed several outfits for him. A pink dress with ruffles for special occasions. A simple shift fashioned out of a flower-covered cloth for everyday use, and a long white gown made of cotton for Edward to sleep in. In addition, she remade his ears, stripping them of a few pieces of fur that remained and designing him a new pair. So he's being dressed up like a girl. I wonder what he thinks of that. Oh, she told him when she was done, you look lovely. He was horrified at first. He was, after all, a boy rabbit. He did not want to be dressed as a girl. And the outfits, even the special occasion dress, was so simple, so plain. They lacked the elegance and artistry of his real clothes. So they lacked, it means they had no elegance, so they weren't beautiful clothes. But then Edward remembered lying on the ocean floor, the muck on his face, the stars so far away, and he said to himself, what difference does it make really? Wearing a dress won't hurt me. Besides, life in the little green house with the fisherman and his wife was sweet. Nellie loved to bake, and so she spent her day in the kitchen. Uh, she put Edward on the counter and leaned up him up against the, uh, the uh, sorry, the flower canister and arranged, um, sorry, arranged his dress around his knees. She bent his ears so that he could hear well. And then she set to work, kneading dough for bread and rolling out dough for cookies and pies. The kitchen soon filled with the smell of baking bread and with the sweet smells of cinnamon and sugar and cloves. The windows steamed up and while Nellie worked, 
she talked. She told Edward about her children, her daughter Lolly, who was a secretary, and her boys, Ralph, who was in the army, and Raymond, who had died of pneumonia when he was only five years old. So pneumonia is a disease um, that you can catch, especially if you're very, very cold um, and is potentially lethal, potentially can kill you. Um, he drowned, he drowned um, himself, he drowned inside of himself, said Nellie. It is a horrible, terrible thing. The worst thing to watch someone you love die right in front of you and not to be able to do something about it. I dream of him almost, uh, most nights. Nellie wiped at her tears with the back of her hands and she smiled at Edward. I suppose you think I'm daft talking to a toy, but it seems to me that you're listening, Susanna. And Edward was surprised to discover that he was listening. Before, when Abilene talked to him, everything seemed so boring, so pointless. But now the stories Nellie told struck him as the most important thing in the world and he listened as if his life depended on what she said. It made him wonder if some of the muck from the ocean floor had gone inside his china head and damaged him somehow. In the evening, Lawrence came home from the sea and there was, a, there was dinner and Edward sat at the table with the fisherman and his wife. Uh, he sat in an old wooden high chair and while at first he was mortified, a high chair, after all, was a high chair designed for babies, not for elegant rabbits. He soon became used to it. He liked being up high, looking out over the table instead of staring at the tablecloth as he had done in the Tulane household. He liked feeling like part of things. So think about how he's feeling now, moving in with this maybe less elegant couple than the Tulane family. But how do you think he's finding it? I think he's quite enjoying it. He likes being part of the family, even though his life isn't quite as grand. Every night after dinner, Lawrence said that he thought he would go and out and grab some fresh air and to the and and sorry, and that maybe Susanna would like to come with him. He placed Edward on his shoulder as he had that first night when he walked um, him through town, bringing him home to Nellie. They went outside and Lawrence lit his pipe and held Edward there on his shoulder. And if the night was clear, Lawrence said the names of the constellations one at a time. Andromeda, Pegasus, pointing at them with the stem of his pipe. So constellations here, constellations mean um, the, the order of the stars in the sky and how they've shaped up. So he's looking at all the stars and their shapes in the sky. Edward loved looking up at the stars and he loved the sound of the constellation names. They were sweet in his ears. Sometimes though, staring up at the night sky, Edward remembered Pellegrina, saw again her dark and glowing eyes and a chill would go through him. Warthogs, he would think, witches. But Nellie, before she put him to bed each night, sang Edward a lullaby, a song about a mockingbird that did not sing and a diamond ring that would not shine. And the sound of Nellie's voice soothed, so calmed the rabbit, and he forgot about Pellegrina. Life for a very long time was sweet. And then Lawrence and Nellie's daughter came to visit. Okay, ladies and gents, so we've finished off that chapter now. How do you think that he's feeling being with this new, uh, with the new couple, Lawrence and Nellie? I think he's quite enjoying it and also seems to me um, like something as dramatic is going to happen when their daughter comes to visit it. But you'll read that this afternoon in, uh, in your own classes. Um, so we'll find out what happens when their daughter comes to visit. So feel free if you'd like to go back and resume the video and then mute me, and then you can read through um, the, the, that text in your own time to get a really good understanding of it. Well done, guys. Absolute pleasure, as always. Look forward to seeing you for tomorrow's uh, uh, reading lesson, where we'll be looking at literal questions. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.